Hey up everyone, welcome to the second episode of From Each According To, um, a show about capitalism. So, as always, I'm going to start off teaching you a little bit of theory, a bit of economic theory, sort of stuff you might learn if you went to university, um, but which I think will help you understand how capitalism works. Right, so today it's quite a big subject, it's called Keynesian economics, right, so Keynesian economics... This was an economic theory, right? So, what we call economic theories are not usually theories about how economics work, right? Although there are, like Marxist economics is all about how does capitalism work, right? Yeah, that's not really the concern of Keynesianism, right? They're more interested in how can we make capitalism work, right? Because they recognise that there's all kinds of problems and contradictions and stuff that work within capitalism. And that it goes through these booms and busts and sometimes it totally destroys itself and then has to rebuild itself and stuff. So, so these economic theorists are more interested in how can we make it work? Like if there's a boom, how can we keep it in a boom before it turns around and goes into a recession? How can we smooth out the problems between wages uh, workers demands for higher wages and stuff like this so it's about managing capitalism rather than giving you some explanation about how it all functions and stuff like that right yeah so that's basically what this keynesian is keynesian economics is sometimes it's easier to see these if you compare two different economic systems together right so basically there's if you go to university there's they'll, they'll teach you because they don't teach you marxist economics anymore it's as if Marx never wrote anything about economics. I studied it. I studied it at degree level. And never once men mentioned Marx ever, <laughs> ever, whatever. This just shows that economics is just indoctrination, really. It's not. It's not really. It's ideology. That's all it is, really. It's when you study economics, all they what they're trying to do is produce students who are pro-capitalist. That's really what they're trying to do, right? There's no questioning capitalism in economics. It's just set as if it's just, that's it. That's just how things work. Do you know what I mean? Instead of actually, that's just some way that some people came up with doing things and we can do things in a different way. No, no, that's just how it is. Do you know what I mean? It's as if these economic things just fell from fell from the sky or some shit. Do you know what I mean? It's not human creation, according to these people. Anyhow, whatever. I'm not yet to slag off economics, although I could do that for hours. But whatever. Right, so basically, you'll get taught that there's two, there's two different theories about how you should run capitalism, how you should make it work. These are things, these are basically like theories for like governments, do you know what I mean? If you're a government, you've got economic policy and stuff, and there's things that you can do that are going to have massive effects on the economy, do you know what I mean? Like if you if you just like spend money, like it's not here tomorrow, until tomorrow, then the massive, you end up with a massive de budget deficit and all sorts of stuff that has all kinds of negative effects. So whatever you do as a government will affect the economy, right? Politics and economics are basically one thing, really. We used to call it political economy, one subject. Um, yeah. Um, basically, like, yeah, we used to call it political economy, right? It used to be considered to be a single subject. Like, Marx wrote a book called A Critique of Political Economy, right? The reason why it got split into two different subjects is all to do with universal suffrage. So, like, the workers were clamouring for, for suffrage to be able to vote and to be able to take part in politics and stuff like this, yeah? And so, eventually, whatever, through whatever social struggle and stuff, we ended up getting the vote, right? So, like, the, the rulers were like, yeah, whatever, we might, we'll give you a vote in politics, but you're not having vote in economics, right? You don't get to fucking elect your managers, you can't vote out your fucking supervisor. Do you know what I mean? You don't have any say over what happens at work. You do as you're told. That's it. Orders come from above and you do what you're told. You at the bottom do as you're told. That's how it is. Yeah, so it's basically some kind of authoritarian fascism bullshit that goes on within a business. That's how it is. It's a top-down top, top down structure like that. Fascism. Like Noam Chomsky calls it private tyranny. The, 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 like, the, the system of power within a company is basically a tyranny, it's basically an authoritarian fascist structure, it's, it's, it's indistinguishable from a fascist structure, the power that goes on at, in, in work, yeah. 
So basically, we spend most of our time at work under fascism. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? But but so we fought, and um, they gave us politics. They let us all get a vote on that. But they separated economics and said, "You're not having any fucking of this democracy bullshit going on in economics." So they split the two subjects into two. So now we have politics and economics as if they're two separate subjects. But the more you study these things, like whatever, I did politics, philosophy, and economics. So I studied both of these subjects, and you can see how they're both massively interlinked with one another. Do you know what I mean? Politics and economics are more or less the same thing. It's actually easier if you think of them as a single thing. It makes much more sense to the world as to why why do politicians do things that bosses want them to do? Because they're basically the same fucking thing. Do you know what I mean? They're the same class. They're the same class of people, and so they do things in their class interest, which means they basically work together. Do you know what I mean? Right, so... <clears throat> so whatever, right? There's, there's supposedly these two different ways that governments can, can manage. And so this is like... These theories are about policies for governments, right? So you've got these two. One of them's called monetarism, yeah? That's the system that we use today. We use monetarism. Our economic system is based around these ideas of monetarism. But this is just one economic theory, yeah? So you've got monetarism. Now, what monetarism says is that, right, so we've got all these million and one different what we call indicators. So, like, unemployment, wage levels, productivity, hiring, all these sorts of things, the pay, the gender pay gap, whatever, right? All these little things that you can look at when you go, let's have a look at the economy. There's a million and one things that you can look at. There's lots of things happening out there, do you know what I mean? It's like this fluid system is the economy with things interacting and bumping into one another and changing things and stuff. It's like whatever, these things are all, are, all, are all... Every time you look at these numbers, they're all different, do you know what I mean? It's constantly in flux. But like, whatever, so there's all these like loads of different indicators that you can look at to figure out what's going on with your economy, yeah? And what monetarism says is that inflation's the thing that you should look at, right? The value of the money, how, how, what, how, what, how many things can you buy with the, the money, right? So the value of money is the most important thing. That's what monetarism says, yeah. Right. So the counter view, it's not really a counter view, it's just a different view, is that Keynesianism says that the indicator that you should care about is um, unemployment and how many people have got jobs and stuff in the economy. That's the thing you should look at. You should try to keep unemployment as low as possible. Try to get... Well, they call, they call it full employment, right? But it's not everybody's got a job. It's, it's like, whatever, it'd be like set at like 10% or something. If 10% of people are unemployed, then that's full employment, whatever. Why are you calling it full? It's not, but whatever, that's what they call it. Call it full employment, but it's not. Like you find within these economic theories that in every single one of them, there's an acceptable limit of people being unemployed. What the fuck, right? Unemployment is a necessary feature of capitalism. You can't get rid of un unemployment. If everybody's got a job, then labour becomes infinite, right? So, like, whatever you can. So then, it, so then, it, so if you did, if you gave everybody a job, labour would go up to infinite. Yeah, the cost of labour would be infinite, right? So then, basically, the only way to get that system going again would be to break everything down and make a load of people unemployed so that they'd accept less wages. That's the only way you could get it going again. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It's like unemployment's a necessary feature, and all of them accept that. That's why they all have that, that level that they call full employment that still impl it still includes a load of people not having jobs. Do you know what I mean? Because they know. They call it, it's like, an, they call it the natural rate of unemployment. <laughs> natural rate? Whatever. Whatever. You're trying to make out like some kind of force of nature, not just how people are interacting with one another on a social, in a social system called economics. <laughs> whatever. Natural rate of unemployment. Whatever. Right, so basically those two, they, that, that's a major difference between these two, is that the, the main indicator that they look at is completely and utterly different. Right. And the thing is that, like, there's the, these two economic things, like, like, whatever. One of the things that you find if you, if you like, read about economics in newspapers and stuff is that these two different economic theories have become politicised, yeah? So, like, one of them's left-wing, one of them's right-wing, yeah? So they say that Keynesianism's left-wing and that monetarism's right-wing, right? So, what, what, right, why is it right-wing? Well, it's clearly right-wing because it was Thatcher and Reagan who brought it in and they were right-wing, so it must be right-wing, yeah? Oh, Keynesianism must be left-wing because it talks about unemployment and left-wing people talk about unemployment, so it must be left-wing. Yeah, what if this is fucking nonsense? They're not left-wing or right-wing, right? They're not even politics. They're just fucking economic theories about how to run capitalism. They're not left-wing or right-wing. That's just nonsense. It's just nonsense. But this, 
like this politicizing of this these economic theories has massive consequences right the whole reason why the tories may have made such a mess of this economy in the last 10 years is because they didn't they knew they knew that they needed to implement keynesian economics right but they didn't want to do that because that's left wing so so they kind of bastardized keynesianism and i'll talk about it later what they did after i've told you what Keynesianism is in first place when I get round to that part. <laughs> right. um, like they basically bastardised Keynes and missed the essential points of it. And that's why they kept fucking up, right? It looked like from an outsider who didn't know anything about Keynesianism might have gone, oh yeah, that, that looks like Keynesianism, but it's not, right? Or they basically fucked everything up. But it's because it was politicised, right? So this becomes back a bit of a major problem. Like The thing is as well that like the only person who's talking about Keynesian economics today is Corbyn. So again, people go, it must be left-wing. You know what I mean? Right? It's proper not, right? Basically, it's not left-wing or right-wing. And it's not that one's right and the other one's wrong. It's just that capitalism goes through boom and bust and boom and bust and boom and bust right this is built into the system right it has to go through this this is how capitalism re keeps reinventing itself it destroys itself in a crash and then it rebuilds itself that's what capitalism does that's how it works right <clears throat> So it goes through these booms and busts. And the thing is that these two economic theories are useful at different times in the cycle. So when the economy is booming, monetarism works perfectly. If you follow inflation, then it's fine, right? But when you go into a crash, inflation is irrelevant, right? In inflation is irrelevant. It makes no difference, right? Infl like right now, we're right on the edge of a crash. And inflation is like at what? 0 0.75. That's practically nothing. It, watching inflation is it's, it's irrelevant, mate. It's not going to make any difference to things. It's not going to help you in any way, right? You need other things when you're in a recession, right? And that's where Keynesian comes in. Because Keynesianism is what you do when you're in a recession. So you can get out of recession, right? So this is what Keynesianism is. It's all about getting out of recession, right? It's not really got very much to say about the economy when it's booming. But when it's bust, then this is when Keynes... Keynesian's ideas are useful, right? Right. So right now, this is this is the thing about Keynesian economics is like, since 1979 and Thatcher came in, nobody's been talking about Keynesian economics, right? But we're in a fucking really shit up. The economy has been in recession for ten fucking years. Yeah, like whatever. It's never happened. We've never been in such a shit economic position for so long. Ten fucking years. Whatever. It takes about three years to get out of recession. And we're still here, ten years later, with same shit. Same shitty wages, same fucking unemployment, same homelessness, same food banks. All rest at shit that when capitalism goes through its fucking inevitable crashes, we all have to fucking suffer. Whatever. But right, whatever. But now it's getting a bit of a revival, because, like, basically, Europe... Like, so basically, this whole austerity bullshit that the Tories came up with, that, like, the best thing to do in a recession is cut back. No, that's the exact opposite of what you should do. But whatever, they just made this shit up, right? Yeah, we need to cut back, stop funding everything, save on public services, all this. This'll get us out of recession. Oh, yeah, has it? Has it? No, is it? Fuck, because that's not what you do. You don't do that. You follow Keynes. You don't follow this knobhead nonsense that you just made up. But that was basically the Anglosphere who came up with this ridiculous idea, the Americans and the Brits, right? And, like, Britain was part of EU, so it kind of bullied the EU. Because, like, like, whatever... Do you know what I mean? Britain's got a, had, before Brexit, had a fairly dynamic economy. For a small country, it punched well, well above its weight when it came to financial matters and stuff. Look at the city of London. Do you know what I mean? It's massive... In, financial institution it's basically the hub of the entire world financial market yeah before brexit destroys that but whatever um so so yeah right so so like europe went along with this austerity thing but europe's figuring out that's we've done we've been doing the wrong thing for the last 10 years so everybody's turning over to keynesianism portugal's gone for a bit keynesian germany has not germany and but like Funnily enough, the business community in Germany are telling them that they need to follow Keynesian economics to get out of this recession, right? But the government's a bit hesitant to do that. Again, we've got a right-wing government, and they think Keynesianism's left-wing, so they don't want to do that. Whatever, stop being idiots and follow economics and stop thinking it's politics. It's not. It's economics. Right, so, so whatever. So in Britain... 
We've got Corbyn, who's also revitalised Keynesianism and said that's what he's going to do. Right, so what is this Keynesianism? What does it say you need to do if you get into a recession? And so basically, this is how it goes with Keynesianism. This is what it says. Right, so if you're in recession, recession is three quarters, so like a quarter of the year, three months, whatever, they divide the year into quarters. Right, so a recession is three quarters of negative growth. Right, so if you've got negative growth, that means that your economy is shrinking. That means that there's less money being made, which will have a knock-on effect. Like, if there's less money, then there's going to be less employment. People are going to be made un unemployed, made homeless, all this sort of shit, right, yeah? So so that's what happens when you go into recession, right? Your economy slows down. So what you need to do is you need to stimulate that economy and you need to get it working again, yeah? Because everything's slowing down. Companies are slowing down. Profits are going down. Everything's going down. Wages are going down. That's what happens. That's what, the, that's what a recession is. It's negative growth, right? So, so you need to stimulate the economy. So this is what Keynes says you do, right? So when you're in a recession like this, Everything, inflation drops, right? Because inflation's about growth, growing the economy, making it go up. That's what inflation is, yeah? The pr prices go up, but wages go up, and it follows itself up like this. But, uh, the, but the economy goes on an upward trajectory, yeah? Now, national banks, central banks, try to keep hold of that growth so that it's not too, too much or too little. They try to keep it at 2%. So Britain, it says that, like the Bank of England has a target of 2%. The, the ECB, the European Central Bank, has a target of 2 or less percent, right? So it, it don't, it don't, the bottom, like so in Britain, if it went below 2%, they try to get it back up to get it to 2 because they try to keep it at 2. But in the ECB, it's 2 or below. So if it's 1, then that's fine. Yeah, do you know what I mean? But that won't be fine in Britain. But that's just a that's different rule, just, just different rules that are being set by different parliaments and stuff right because there's not like an accepted thing about this it's basically make it up as you go along to be honest i don't know why it's two percent i don't think anybody knows why <laughs> it's just something that somebody decided that that was the number and then they went ahead with it whatever whatever <laughs> right but whatever right so you need to stimulate the economy right and in everything drops inflation drops so interest rates drop right yeah also bonds drop so so like raising money becomes really cheap yeah you're not having to pay interest rates on it you're paying out for anything right so whatever so this is the time to borrow money right if it's if money if money's cheap then that's the time to borrow it yeah so what Keynesian says is now what you need to do is you need to borrow a shitload of money right you need to borrow a load of money because it's cheap right and then what you need to do with that money is you need to employ people right and you need to get those people to build infrastructure projects right so like hospitals and houses and roads and internet and, and things like this yeah the infrastructure of the country you need to upgrade this yeah so so you've got double benefits there of your infrastructure is going to be better at the end of this after you've upgraded it, yeah. But the other thing is that you've just employed a load of people, which means you've just given them a load of money. So what happens when you give people money? They spend it, right? So they're going to buy things, right? So that means shops are going to sell things, which means shops are going to make money, which means they're going to be more profitable, which means they can employ more people, right? So... Just giving these people a load of money has a massive knock-on effect in the rest of the economy. Do you know what I mean? And it like gets other gets shops getting more money and they employ people. And you just have this knock-on effect, right? So there's this thing in economics which is called the multiplier effect, yeah? And it's what's called one of the laws of economics, right? So it's always, it's, it's always applicable. And it goes like this. If you, put, if you put a billion pounds into the economy based on infrastructure projects. Infrastructure projects is important, right? It's not just about putting money into the economy. That's the problem that the Tories made, is that's what they thought it meant. So they just gave a load of money to bankers. Yeah, that's not what you do. You have to you have to invest this in inf infrastructure projects or it don't work, right? That This is part of the theory, right? You can't just miss that bit out, right? Like the Tories did. You can't do that, right? Do you know what I mean? Right, so... So, um, so you need to invest in infrastructure, right? So if you put a billion pounds into investing in infrastructure, all of the knock-on effects that it has in the economy and the generating of more economic activity that happens here, 
it actually has a multiply, it multiplies it. It doesn't just add to it, it multiplies it, right? So you put a billion pounds in, but the amount of econo economic activity that you get out of that is more than a billion pounds, right? And that's called the multiplier effect. This is, a, this is what's called a law of economics, right? It applies and it always applies. And you see it all the time when this happens, right? So, so what happens is you borrow a shitload of money, you employ people to build infrastructure projects, you upgrade your country and you give a load of money to people who then spend it in shops and, they, they, and, they, and then that has a knock on effect through the economy which happens this multiplier effect which gets more out than what you put in, right? So at that stage as a government, you've, got, no, you've now got a hell of a lot more people who are employed. There's a lot more people working out there. So there's a lot more people paying income tax than we were paying before. So now tax revenues have just gone through the roof because everybody's working, right? So now you've got a load of money. So what do you do with that money? You pay off the debt that you just got in the beginning. Right? You pay that off, right? But because you've had this multiplier effect, you've got more money than the debt. So you pay off the debt and you've still got a shitload of money left at the end, right? That is Keynesianism. That is how you get out of recession, right? This is proven economic theory, right? Yeah? And the only person that's using these ideas is Jeremy Corbyn, or John McDonald, right? The Labour Party. They're the only ones that are using these ideas. And that's what you do to get out of recession. And if we want to get out of this recession, we need to have a Labour Party. Because they're the only ones who are saying what you do. Right. So that's Keynesianism. Right. So what the fuck is going on in capitalism? What's going on there? Right. So, right. So in America... We've had pretty bad economic news out of America. Like, for the longest time, America was totally booking the trend with, like, what was going on in global capitalism. Like, everywhere you looked, massive slowdown, massive recession. Or if not quite in recession, then generating massive amounts of debt to keep themselves out of recession. Like, for the longest time, everything looked shit, apart from America, right? Because, like, t Trump, when he came in, he gave a massive tax rebate to the rich, yeah? And, like, do you know what I mean? Like, if you give tax rebates to the rich, it's not always going to stimulate the economy. It's up to them what they do with that money, do you know what I mean? And sometimes capitalists just do whatever's in their own interest, yeah. But, like, whatever the capitalist class in America are quite linked with, with Trump. Do you know what I mean? He's one of them. He's a capitalist. He's a fucking billionaire, do you know what I mean? He socialises with these people. They're part of his social group and stuff, do you know what I mean? Billionaires hang out with other billionaires, do you know what I mean? So, basically, they played ball. The capitalists played ball and they used this money. Right, and they invested it in fucking terrible things like coal, f fucking coal power, ele electric, coal generated electric power plants. They invested it in things like that, which is not too great, but whatever, that stimulated the economy a bit, yeah. So their economy was going quite a bit, but also it was like fun, it was fu fueled by massive debt, like ridiculous amounts of debt, like trillions and trillions of pounds worth of debt to keep this economy afloat. Right, but but recently things are not looking good for them, right? Whatever, this trade war with, Japan, with China is massively hitting their economy. It's really massively hitting it. And so, like, they're going, they're going downhill. Like, manufacturing, the manufacturing sector in America went into recession last month, right? That's the first time that's happened. All sectors are down. Most of them are, like, teetering along the edge of recession. So, whatever, if America goes into recession, that'll have massive repercussions around the world. This is the world's largest economy, right? If that shuts up, then that'll have massive repercussions around the world. Everybody will feel it. Whatever, America sneezes, everybody else gets cold. Do you know what I mean? That's what happens in economics. So, whatever, things are looking pretty bad over there in America. And, you know, I just had some really bad news today. Three banks, banks have just gone bust. Whatever. Whatever, that's massive. Banks don't go bust, whatever, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Things have got to get pretty shit if the fucking banks are going bust. Crazy, crazy. So these fucking banks, man. Um, they basically... Um, they basically like had £200 million worth of assets, this bank. So it's not small, this is fucking huge. £200 million worth of assets. It's just gone to the wall. So, like, whatever, this is going to have massive repercussions for people with mortgages and shit like that. Do you know what I mean? Like, whatever, there'll be massive repossessions of houses because banks are going to try and get this money back as much as they can, whatever. But they've gone into administration. But when you go into administration, the whole point is to get as much money out of it as you can to give to shareholders. Do you know what I mean? 
So whatever, they'll probably call in loads of mortgages and shit like that. It's going to have massive ramifications. But like whatever, there's 4,700 banks in America. So three of them going bust doesn't sound like a lot. But, um, but yeah, right. So the three banks that went under, right. One of them went under for unsafe practices. So whatever, they're just sh the shit at running it. Do you know what I mean? Right whatever nothing big the other one just made just made losses so like it's not like 2008 it's not like there's a particular sector do you know like so in 2008 it was a housing market that dragged the, the banks down because it was overly inflated his massive bubble there you know, and all these like subprime mortgage shit that they'd given right but like that was that the problem there was like it just concentrated into one particular sector it don't look like it's that that's, that's causing this. It seems to be like a, a sector-wide thing that's happening in these with these banks. But anyway, right, there's 4,700, right? And over a quarter of them are, are like, on. Well, they're calling it a pre-failure situation, right? So they're all in, they're all in bad situations. They haven't got enough assets and stuff to keep everything going. And so, they haven't gone under, but it's not looking good for for banking sector in America. Do you know what I mean? Like, and banking, right? Banking is the fucking oil that keeps capitalism going with money. Do you know what I mean? If you've got if if things are happening there, then it's going to have massive effects on everything else. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you want a company or whatever, you go borrow money from a bank, don't you? Do you know what I mean? Like, and if all banks are in shit stuff, then whatever, it's have massive massive effects. This, whatever, it's going to have loads of effects. Um. Um, yeah, so a quarter of them are in pre-failure, so that's not looking too good whatsoever for fucking banking sector. Right, okay, so this is economic news that's coming out of Labour, right? So basically, Labour's just produced its manifesto, which is a bit weird, I thought they'd already done that, but whatever, they've just produced their manifesto. So this is one of the main... Well, whatever, it's not one of the main. There's loads of economic stuff, but I've covered most of the things that Labour are doing in here. But this is something new, right? This is... Well, it's not new. They mentioned it ages ago, but it's the first time it's been published, right? So then this is part of their manifesto, right? So essentially, Labour have said... that basically, they want to up the... Um, the, the, the workers should, like, own some of the company that they work in. Do you know what I mean? Like, that they should... So, like, when a company generates profits, those profits go to shareholders, yeah? They don't go to the workers, right? Workers are paid a wage and that's it, yeah. So basically, Labour wants to try and de democratise the, the business thing so that so that workers do get some of the share at profits, right? Which, um, whatever, I'm anti-capitalist, let's just get rid of capitalism. But I suppose, whatever, if you're going to have capitalism, then make it as good for workers as you possibly can, do you know what I mean? So if they're going to get some of this profit, then that seems like a pretty good thing, to be, to be honest. If you're into that sort of thing, <laughs> I'm, I'm more into revolution and overthrowing capitalism. But if that's not your thing, then whatever. Just give loads of shit to workers. I'm, I'm okay with that. I support that. That's all right. It's a step in the right direction, isn't it? Right, so whatever. Labour said they're going to give shares to workers, right? So, sh so they get shares. They're going to have 10% of the shares. Any company that's got over 250 employees is going to have to give 10% of the shares of the company over to workers, right? So they're going to put it in to this um, inclusive ownership fund, that's what they're going to call it, right? This is basically going to be like a financial instrument, like a pension fund or an insurance company, yeah. This is going to be a company that's going to run this money. The money will go to them and then they're going to decide what to do with that money. So they might decide to invest it in something else, do you know what I mean? And try to make some money on stock exchange or whatever. But it's entirely up to them. But the people who run this thing are going to be the workers. So it's going to be the workers who are in control of this fund, right? So, whatever, they've decided, they've said that basically what you're going to have to do is, like, so it's got to go up to 10% shares, right? But they're not going to hit them straight away with that. They're going to give them a 10-year thing. So they've got to put 1% in every year for 10 years until it gets to 10%, right? So, so whatever. It's going to be a massive shock to the company. The, all that profit's just going to come straight out of capitalist pocket. Do you know what I mean? Capitalists are not going to be right pleased about this, but whatever, who gives a fuck with you? are pleased about it. You do as you're told. Right, so whatever, that's 10% less profit for capitalists, more profit for workers. Got to be a good thing, hasn't it? Got to be a good thing. Right, so basically what's going to happen with this is um, is that whatever, this money is going to come out of businesses and it's going to go into this fund. Well... Right.
To be fair, not all of that money is going to go to the workers, right? The workers are going to get up to £500. Which, it's not a bad investment for not for nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's 500 quid's better than a key bollocks, isn't it? You know what I mean? All right, whatever. But 500 quid of it per year is going to go to, to workers. And the rest of the money is going to go to government. So whatever, whatever. I ain't got a problem with that. Government's got it's, This government's got loads of spending things, so it needs to get money from somewhere. Do you know what I mean? So whatever. I think this is all right. Split it between government and workers. Whatever. Workers are getting something they weren't getting before. So whatever. You've got to be fucking... Happy about that if you're a worker, and you yeah, 500 quid's better than no. Whatever, so basically, over the project of this, it's going to be 300 billion pounds that's going to be taken away from capitalists and given to workers. So, whatever, that's fucking awesome. That's fucking awesome. These fucking labour guys, they understand economics, don't they? Do you know what I mean? Tories don't seem to have a fucking clue how it works at all, but labour, they've got the great sort of out, they know what they're doing, they know what they're fucking doing, they're not fucking about, man. Whatever, right, so, whatever, what else is happening in capitalism? Right, so, Ghana, right, Africa, one of the poorest countries in Africa, it's just found a lot of shit, load of fucking oil, right, whatever, whatever. So, as you can imagine, all fucking Western capitalists are all frothing at the mouth, trying to get involved in that shit, right? But whatever, this is proper cool, because usually all this shit, basically, like, whatever, all oil is basically, it doesn't matter where this oil is, it's basically owned by about four companies, a British company, American company, and Aramco, which is like Saudi Arabia, yeah. Basically, everything, every oil field everywhere is owned by these companies, do you know what I mean? By Western companies, apart from Aramco, which... Saudi Arabian, but whatever, all the rest of them are, are British or American, it's Dutch, um, French, that's it. They're, they're basically, they basically owe not everything to do with the oil, right? So, whatever, usually it's one of them lot that finds it. Do you know what I mean? They basically go to countries and stuff and they get. They get uh, permits to go drill for oil, yeah, and then basically, if they find the oil, then they get to keep it and then they might pay some to the government, but basically they just get to keep it all, do you know what I mean, this is basically how it works, oil companies basically keep all of the oil that they find, they don't really pay that much to the government, whatever, you'd be lucky if they get 5% government of what actually comes out of it, so it doesn't really generally help the country, right, but whatever, this time, it was just some African company, right, they had no history whatsoever of looking for oil, it's just random, let's go look for some oil, right, whatever, let's do that then, yeah, so they just went and bought this oil rig thing, Went out into the sea, dug, fucking found a shitload of oil, <laughs> like, whatever. So then they dug another hole, another shitload of oil. They've only dug through two holes and both of them have found a shitload of oil, right, whatever. So, whatever, 250,000 barrels a day, man, whatever, whatever. This puts Ghana in one of the top producers of oil around the world, you know what I mean, whatever. I think Saudi Arabia does like a million barrels a day, so that's four times. But whatever, that's a quarter of what Saudi Arabia is doing. Whatever, this is a massive oil field, this is huge. It's absolutely fucking huge. Right, so basically, the total is 1.2 billion barrels. 1.2 billion barrels in these oil fields, whatever. But whatever, because it's just this random African company from Ghana, they're going to give it all to government, right? And they're going to take, like, a payment for it, whatever, total opposite way around is how it usually works. But whatever, that's pretty cool for Ghana, man. They're, they're, going, to, they're going to have massive amounts of wealth that they didn't have before. Do you know what I mean? So, whatever, it's pretty cool. Well, whatever, it's not cool, it's fucking oil. Do you know what I mean? Let's not make money out of oil. But whatever, this, that's the world we live in, so whatever. They're going to make loads of money out of oil, whatever. Um, clearly, we don't, we don't want to be doing that. That's not what we should be doing. We should be getting rid of oil, but... Whatever, it's capitalism. You don't ask me what should happen. You don't give a fuck what I think. Right, so, whatever, right. So, yeah, this is amazing, isn't it? This is lovely. This is this is a nice thing. <laughs> it's not really. However, apparently, if you want to live in Antigua, right, Antigua, whatever, one of these tax haven places, yeah, this is, whatever, tax havens are just, just, just how are these allowed to exist? It's just basically money laundering that's going on here, but it's just legitimate, whatever, it's just cra crazy shit, crazy shit that goes on in Caribbean, man. All these little silly banks where fucking drug dealers and stuff put all their money and shit, whatever, right? But the thing is that, like, these, these countries... Do you know what I mean? Brit British banks and stuff are heavily involved in all this money laundering shit that goes on in the Caribbean. They're heavily fucking involved in this shit. But, like, whatever, right? So, so like, Antigua's got these, like, like, what do you call it? Fucking 
tax haven things where you can basically put all your money in there and nobody's, they're not going to tell anybody about where it came from or how much money you've got or anything like that basically whatever you put the money into there it comes out clean do you know what I mean it's just basically money laundering that's what's going on let's not fucking beat about the bush that's what's going on that's where you're making money from from money laundering shit for criminals that's what's happening do you know what I mean let's not pretend that's not what happened you know we have seen the Panama papers we, we know what's going on right, but whatever right so Antigua if you want to become a citizen, so you can start using these tax havens, all you have to do is pay £132,000, right, whatever, for a millionaire or a billionaire, that's nothing, that's like chump change, right? And if you pay that, you get a citizenship, which then allows you to use all kinds of tax things, right? They've had over 100,000 people apply for these things, right? Whatever, whatever. It's clear that all that's going on here is money laundering, right? These are rich people laundering their fucking money, trying to keep it away so they don't have to pay taxes, so they don't have to fucking pay their fair share. That's what's going on here. Shut this shit down. Shut tax havens down. Stop rich people doing this shit. But no, if you give them 132000 you can get involved with this. Get involved with it. Yeah. No thanks. Won't do that. Right, so... um. Yeah, so I suppose last uh, last news story really. Again, it's about Labour. So, like I say, Labour's just just re just released its manifesto today, and like there's absolutely shit shit loads of things to do with economics that's involved in this manifesto. Of course, Labour have got their shit sorted out. They know what they're doing. I trust them totally with economics. Every time John McDonnell says something, I agree with him totally. Whatever. Do you know what I mean? I went to university and learnt this shit. He's the only one who's talking any sense. Fucking Tories, totally, Tories haven't got a fucking clue. I ain't got a clue. I could run country better than they fucking could. Whatever. I fucking hate capitalism. I could make it work better than they can. Right. So, whatever, right. So, there's loads of things in there. Things to do with economics, right. So, whatever. I kind of mentioned um, the... Um, did I mention that? Yeah, the shares for workers. So, they're going to give workers 10% shares in it. Whatever. That's economics. They're going to give... Um, they're going to get councils... To run local bus services, which that's fucking awesome, man. Fucking bus services are a fucking nightmare, man. Total fucking nightmare. Um, don't know what's going on with this camera, why it's gone dark. Whatever, that's massively oversaturated. I don't even know what I'm doing. Can you even see my face? Oh, just go away, I don't want you to do that. Whatever. Can you even see me? Whatever. Yeah, it's on that last story anyhow, so whatever. Right, so, whatever, right. So they've got loads of things in there, things about economics, right. So they're going to give, like, whatever. They're going to get councils to run bus services. Like, bus services are a fucking nightmare around here. Because they've been privatised. So it's all about money. Do you know what I mean? Like, whatever. Why do buses stop? At night time, why aren't they continuing through night? Do you think people haven't got to go places at three o'clock in the morning? Like, whatever, do you even know how our economy works? We've got loads of people who work nights and stuff, but buses shut down at the middle of nights, whatever, whatever. So get that shit sorted out. If council are involved in it, then then when it comes to elections and stuff, these are issues that we can talk about and argue about and get politicians to do stuff, do you know what I mean? Like, um, whatever, so that's a good one. So, but that's council, that's going to have a massive economic effect, all these local bus companies are going to go out of bus, fuck them, aren't they, fuck them, go out of business or whatever, however, it's going to have an effect on capitalists, isn't it, they're not going to be pleased, who gives a fuck, anyway, right, so they're going to put a tax on oil producers, so like Britain's a massive oil producer, we've got loads of oil fields at North Sea, we're like a member of OPEC and stuff, so we're a massive oil producer. We, we generate billions of pounds in this country. Yeah, we get a lot, quite get quite a lot of tax from it. But whatever they've said, we're going to massively tax oil fields, it's mainly to do with climate change. That's their argument. It's not about raising money, but whatever, it'll raise a shitload of money doing it. But it's mainly about trying to cut back on oil and stuff. And it's got they've got really good environmental credentials, really. To be fair, at Labour Party, this one of the things they keep mentioning all the time about you need to sort this fucking climate shit out. Do you know what I mean? And they also have like made a pledge for carbon neutral for 2030, which is 10 years before they're supposed to, before everybody else has said it. So they're going to do it 10 years before the rest of the world, which is pretty cool. That's something we can be proud of, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Right, so yeah, other than economics, I mean, you know, they're going to nationalise everything. Well, not everything, because <laughs> then that would just turn us into the Soviet Union. <laughs> Basically, they're going to nationalise a shitload of stuff, do you know what I mean? Railways... Electricity, gas, water, BT, 
whatever. I can't think of anything else. That's probably about it. But whatever, that's a shitload of industry. <laughs> you know, that's quite a big, quite a, quite a lot to nationalise. But whatever, so that's going to have massive economic effects. They're going to borrow 400 billion, like I was saying about Keynesian economics. They say you need to borrow all a shitload of money. And they've said, right, well, that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. We're going to borrow a shitload of money. We're going to employ a load of people to fucking upgrade our infrastructure. And we're going to kickstart the economy with that. Right, so they're going to borrow 400 billion. Whatever. They'll pay it back. So whatever, it's not a problem. Right, so they have got that, right? So another one, 32 hour week. Yeah, man, whatever. Whatever, that's cutting back on... People shouldn't be fucking working forever, do you know what I mean? Like, whatever. In 19th century, we were arguing about eight hour day, eight hours at work, eight hours asleep, and eight hours to do what we want. Yeah, we're still not in that situation. Now, over 100 years later, we're still having people working 12-hour shifts and stuff. Sh fucking shut that shit down. Workers don't need to be at fucking work that long. 32 hours, labour, good policy. Right, but whatever, going to have massive economic effects, that, whatever, do you know what I mean? Work, b bosses can't exploit the workers, so they might have to employ some other workers or something, whatever, whatever. But it's a massive economic thing, 32 hours, but it's a good one. Ban zero-hour contracts, whatever, let's get rid of this shit, man, I fucking hate zero-hour contracts. Basically, a beck and call to the fucking capitalist who can call you in to do work at any time, but you, you don't get paid for this shit, you just have to be waiting there, waiting for him to ring you, fuck off. Fuck off. Give people full fucking rights when they're at work. As soon as you fucking employ them, you have to pay for fucking... You have to pay for holidays. You have to pay for maternity pay. You have to pay sick pay. You have to give them full fucking rights. No questions. No fucking zero-hour contracts. Get rid of that shit. Get that out of here. Yeah? Free bus travel to under-25s. Man, that's awesome. That's awesome. Transport's a major fucking problem in this country, man. It's just too expensive. 80 quid to go to London. Fuck off. I could fly to fucking Moscow for that fucking price. Whatever. Whatever. Fucking hell. Last time I travelled, like, on a train in France, it's like, I was travelling from this place called villa sur It's like in Normandy, right? To Paris. It's like, whatever. It's about probably the same distance as it is from my house to London. It cost me a fiver... Uh, Cost me 80 quid to do the same journey over here. Whatever, sort that shit out. Right, so, but whatever, free bus travel for, for under 25, so that's awesome, that's awesome. That's going to help loads of people, man. It's ridiculously expensive to travel in this country, and if you're giving them it for free, then that's awesome. I'm totally go for that, man. It's cool as fuck. Again, whatever, don't know how they're going to do that. They're probably some kind of subsidy or something like that. Um, so it might not directly come out of the pockets of capitalists. It's probably going to come out of... Um, public expenditure.